All right, folks, we have made it to the pond. We're down here at the dock, and Jace Man's gonna take off around the pond and try a spot that he likes fishing. But hopefully we will get on these fish today hot and heavy. This is Papa Bear and the Jace Man with Papa Bear Outdoors. We'll see you in a few, folks. All right, folks, this is our first cast. Sitting down here at the pond in Southern Illinois. Pretty windy today. I was hoping the trees would block it, but it's coming right in from the road there. using the jig and bobber technique right now. I've got uh, 1 64th ounce jig heads with a one inch gulp minnow tied on. Got a double hook rig, small bobber, and we are trying to get some pan fish to bite for us here. using the little bobber to try to get a little bit more distance. If I don't get any bites that technique, I'll take the bobber off and just go straight jigs. Got a mixture of sun and clouds right now. And like I said earlier, we have a, a front moving in. It's gonna bring rains and storms tonight. little nibble. There he is, fish on. <laughs> little bitty old bass right there. Good lance. First fish of the day though. I don't even believe I'm going to take that one home. We are trying to clean a few small fish out of this pond. It's stunted with small bass, but that's even smaller than what we're trying to clean out of here. So we'll let him grow up a little bit. There we go, that's a better fish. That and took like he meant it there. A little bass look as well, I think. Yep. Now that's more the size we're trying to cull out of here. There we go. Beautiful day on the pond over here in southern Illinois. A little private pond. A buddy of mine from work has and Jace caught him a fish, I believe. All the fish over here, there's like so many. At, oh, right over here. It's like, it's so cool. Oh, oh. Caught one, guys. It came off the hook on the ground. I'm trying to get my things out real quick so I can pick that thing up. Look at him, guys. Look at it. Take a picture. OK, 
okay? Yes, he did. Jace got him one. That young man is a fishing fool, boy. He loves to fish. We'll give it a few more minutes with the bobber. It would be probably kind of tough to, uh, to cast into this wind without the bobber, but I may give it a try here in a little bit if they don't pick up a little bit. Bobber fishing them. There's a fish. Oh yeah, now that's what I'm looking for. And just a little bit smaller than what I want to keep on these, but a nice fish nonetheless. Now that's a hybrid, little hybrid bluegill. All right, but the, uh, the gulp minnow is a very, very good bait. last several fishing trips I've had has been windy as all get out. All right, that's on bottom right there. I've got a fish on it. <laughs> a little bit deep. We're right at, say, four and a half feet right now to the bottom hook. It may be just slightly too deep. Pretty little. That is a baby red ear right there. That's the smallest red ear I can remember catching. I'm going to take this, shallow it up just a hair. Right, that brings us to about a three foot overall. First jig's down about 20 inches and then the other one's about 14 under it. There, oop, boy I had one and I'm swinging a miss on him there. Had a great church service this morning. And uh, I'm the worship leader at our church and also teach uh, adult Sunday school. And we had a wedding within the church family to this weekend. Our and folks, uh, including our pastor, was gone today. We had a guest speaker. And Brother Cody did a fine job filling in for our pastor. Our pastor actually performed the wedding ceremony, so he wasn't able to be with us today. But... Uh, Spirits were uplifted today, and it was just a good day. Now we're down at the pond, relaxing on this beautiful sunny Sunday, or partly cloudy Sunday anyhow, and uh, going after a few fish. Good way to relax. Catching any more, Jace? Getting any more bites? If you want to try this jig and bobbering, you can too if you want to later. Good. And I did too. <laughs> oh, nice. Nothing big, but a fun tug on the rod on these ultralights. I 
I don't know when I, if I showed you when I was showing you these, but I actually tied loop knots on these jig heads to uh, impart a little more action into these jigs. And that head got tore out at the top, so I'm just going to flip it over and bring the hook with him upside down and get a little more life out of that jig. And the fish don't seem to mind whether the white side's up or the chartreuse side. When you're only throwing a one inch bait, if you want action in it, it's got to be a soft, flexible bait, pliable. And uh, the trade-off to having a soft, pliable bait is you, uh, you got a bait that tears easily. Got my Airstream PTC seven and a half foot ultralight with me today. This is made by Bass Pro Shops, and the PTC stands for Panfish Trout and Crappie. Um, I got that coupled with a Quantum Optics. This is a size 20 reel, and I've got, uh, I believe, it is either four or six pound P line, uh, P line. Uh, fluorocarbon line on here and that is the setup today it's probably in the um, upper 70s right now pretty stiff breeze 10 to 15 mile an hour I would say gusts up to 20 There he is. Yeah. Another nice little hybrid. Just no good eating size ones yet. Love catching them. We'd like to have a fish fry. Uh, Jace, I believe, loves to eat fried fish as much as I do. Oh, had one hit it right there while I was messing with my line. Ain't that something? A young red ear right there. And you see the orange starting on his operculum. Right here dangling at the dock. <laughs> well, I was trying to get the line unwrapped from around the edge of the my or end of my rod. Tell you what, them bass underneath them cypress trees over there are coming slap out of the water after them bugs. Got one after it, and we're hooked up. Right, another juvenile red ear right there. Try 
try that again. Just for giggles, let's take this bobber off. I'm going to see if I can cast in this old wind. No guarantees, but nothing ventured, nothing gained, they say. I'd much rather just jig fish, personally. So let's see what kind of... Yeah, that ain't bad distance. I can work with that. Just run the line through there and to make this loop knot for this jig fishing you just double or make a loop with your line and then run the jig through it like an overhand knot except you go three times instead of just once so one two and three and then grab a hold of that line to where the loop doesn't make a too big a loop. Pull it down and then wet the line and tighten it up. That gives you your loop knot for that jig head. And you just do the end jig the same way. Run it through, double it over, make a loop with the doubled line A lot easier if you don't have arthritic fingers. And then pass it through the big loop that you just made three times. One, two, and three. Pull the jig head through. And snug it knot down. And always wet your line before you pull it tight. Keep from developing uh, friction in that line and causing a weak spot. Right like that. And then what little tag you got there, cut that off. Right like that. And now we're going to put him some jig bodies on. Yeah, throw it out there and just keep your line tight though. So as the wind blows bags in your line, just tighten up on your line and just work it back to you slowly and then make another cast. You can fish it right along the banks. I mean, out from the bank because it's going to be too deep to fish right on the bank. And you are going to catch some fish, I believe, my buddy. But you got to, this is a slip bobber, so if you work it too fast, it'll just bring the jigs right up below the bobber. So you gotta, gotta leave enough slack in the line that uh, the jigs sink. Uh oh, I dropped that one. Can you get that one for me? It's right in front of me there. Here, just duck under all of that. See it right there? Duck your head under your line there. All right, let me see. Go tear them up, bud. Yep. Here, 
hook that in your line or hook holder. That way it don't get tangled up before you get over there. It's up here. I'm getting ready to put my bobber back on. I'm just going to try it a little bit without the bobber. Okay, I'm going to try dragging them in without the jig in action and see if they like that a little bit better. Sometimes they get finicky and they don't want that hopping action, but just a straight retrieve. Just a steady, slow retrieve. There he is. Oh, a little bass. Little bass. He liked that slow retrieve. Yes, sir. Got the line wrapped all the way around his face. What a mess, Mr. Bass. All right. Another one of them coal bass right there that we're going to take home if we catch enough of them. Speed it up my retrieve just a hair to keep it right off the bottom. There he is. There he is. Oh, that's a Mondo right there, folks. That's what we're looking for. That's what I'm looking for right there on a hybrid. A hybrid that you can put your thumb in his mouth. That's pretty good there. That fish was on there when I took the slack out of it. He hit it on the fall. Not a bad one, but we'll let this one go. That's a little shell cracker. You're not taking my jig. <laughs> he tried to hang on to it, didn't he? All right. Wonderful. Bottom jig is tails fouled up. Let's get that back. There we go. Beautiful day here in southern Illinois, right outside of Brookport. Oh, folks, we got us a decent one that hit it on the fall once again. Oh, yeah. Another nice little sunfish species. Little hybrid. I bought 
these particular jars several years ago. And uh, as long as you keep the, the juice in there, in your jar, as long as it don't leak out, they will last for quite some time. Like I said, these are several years old here. I got the idea of using these from Justin at Kayak Catfish. I've watched several videos of his. This is what he uses to catch the bait that he goes catfishing with. These will catch all the bluegill and uh, sunfish species. They'll catch crappie. They'll catch uh, bass, catfish, just about anything you can want to catch, they'll catch it. Oh, and what I just caught then was a fish stick. <laughs> uh, my buddy Marcus that lets us fish over here told me that they had sunk several Christmas trees out in the middle of the pond and that may have been part of that tree sunk out there. I watched several different uh, fishing shows on YouTube myself, and I saw a technique on uh, Sportsman's Journal, and that's uh, Tyler and Sarah Trampy, and they were catching crappie to be continued. <laughs> that feels like good fish. Yeah, not bad. Not a giant, but respectable. Nice little bluegill right there. But they were catching crappie and slab crappie at that. Using these same, this is where I uh, got the idea to buy them 164th ounce jig heads. That's exactly what they was using. And they were using two inch grubs like a uh, Bobby Garland. Uh, but they was hooking them wacky style. And here in a minute, I will show you what I mean by that, but they were hooking the bodies through the middle crossways. And with that turn body, the jigs fall slower through the water column. And they were catching these fish in about one foot of water in the treetops in the laydowns. And, uh, with that wacky style jig. And we're hooked up again. Another little bluegill. So we, or no, that's a red ear there. So we will try that here in a little bit. Just for funsies. When these uh, particular bodies wear out, I will, uh, I'll turn them crossways and fish them wacky style and we'll see if we can't invoke some more strikes. All right, folks, we are back. We're rigged back up. And those of y'all that watch our channel regularly knows that my redhead loves everything pink. So as an homage to the redhead, that Bobaloo, I put on a pink and white jig head and then on the bottom, I've got a black jig head. And uh, I was telling y'all earlier about, uh, about wacky rigging these minnows. 
And since I'm re-rigging and everything, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So what you do is you hook that minna through the center of the body, right about in the middle, right like that. And that falling through the water column crossways like that slows the descent of the lure through the water column. And it gives them fish just a little bit longer look at this bait. And uh, they don't seem to mind them things turn sideways like that. It looks like a wounded bait fish in the water fluttering down as it's dying. So let's see if that uh, does anything for us. And then just a little wiggle on the line will cause that minnow to flutter like a dying bait fish. Not really a jigging action, just a shaking, a little wiggle. And there he is, right on cue. And there we go, there's a, uh, another red ear, smaller one. Called on the wacky rigged gulp minnow, right there. There he is. <laughs> Little in there and unslung the top minnow body off. There we go. That's one of the smaller ones we've caught today. Oh, I hear that Jay, so working on another one over there. Jace is going to have some good footage for you folks oh, as well. It's a blue, it's a sunfish. Thing's big. Oh, it came off. Okay, guys, we gotta get all handy dandy things. Let's go pick this thing up. Look at that. Oh. Oh. What is its mouth? Can't get it. Okay, got it, guys. Cup. Take a picture. Okay. Put this back. Thank you for biting. Okay, guys. Bye. With those minnow bodies turned crossways, not only does it go slower through the water column, oh my, that one hit it on the drop. Uh, it also has more wind resistance when you're casting it, and therefore your casts aren't going as far. I've got a double, folks. Look at there. A bass and a bluegill at the same time. <laughs> now that's fun. That's fun. They hit it on the drop. We'll send the bluegill back to the depths and I think we'll cull that, uh, that little bass. And the only reason we're keeping these bass, folks, is this pond is overrun with these little tiny bass. And uh, in order for the uh, pond to get healthier 
and get bigger bass in it, we got to get rid of the abundance of these little bitty ones and kind of thin them out to where the bigger ones have more food to eat. So uh, that is the thinking behind it. Look at that thing. Oh. Got a tick on me too. Mm, we're gonna bring that a papa. Looks big enough. Ooh. Wait. Uh, uh. That's not. Let's go check. I don't know if y'all can see this, but look, there's a fish right there. That is so cool. I just keep seeing fish come up. It's so cool. That's what I like about this spot today, is that I'm catching fish, getting bites, and that I keep seeing fish up close to me. So, bye. Caught another one. Oh, this is one I think we can keep. Hey, Papa. All right, folks, we're rigged back up. I found that snag again. <laughs> Using this light line, it's hard to get them back sometimes. This light line is what helps you get the fish too, especially when they're finicky. Using these finesse techniques. Oh, missed him. Missed that fish. Let's try a little closer to the trees. There he is. All right. a lot of that size biting right now. Just slightly smaller than I, what I want to keep on those because the red ears tend to get bigger. But that's not a bad one. Right along the tree line on that side. And that wacky rigged goat minnow strikes again. We got another. Oh! Boy, is that the same one? Ain't no way. I think it's this. I think it's the same one. Wait. I think we can keep this one. Bye. Let's take a picture. Well, this thing needs to stop. Okay, bye. There he is. A little smaller fish there. But a fish nonetheless, as I'm fond of saying. Oh, he tried to take my minner. Right. Now, if we can find some quality size fish. There he is, on the wiggle. <laughs> All right, another one right on the verge of being big enough to keep. Lots of this size fish today, which is good. 
by fall, they'll be eaters, I think. Got off on me. <laughs> Another one hit it on the fall there. Oh boy. Look at that pretty little red ear starting to get the uh, the splotches. Not quite mature yet but getting there oh what a lot of fun on a Sunday afternoon in God's creation Papa Bear and the Jace man out here having a great time fishing together Little Billy Feller. Feller, I've used bait bigger than you. Matter of fact, that one inch gulp like to whoop you. <laughs> oh, this is a lot of fun, folks. Using that wacky style technique on a one inch gulp minnow. Little bit slower presentation, slower fall through the water column. Jace man just throw the fish back in. Uh oh, I had one on and he got off on me. Didn't lose my jigs this time. There he is. Folks, this uh, seven and a half foot rod, throwing these very light jigs that we're throwing, really helps you get a little extra distance out on such a light presentation. I highly recommend this Bass Pro Shops PTC uh, Airstream rod. It is a, a dandy, I'm here to tell you. That's a little stronger fish. Yeah, we got a bass or we got a big shell cracker. Well, <laughs> wasn't that big, he was just mean. That sucker was just mean, I'm here to tell you. Bluegill, true bluegill this time. And yeah, that rascal really put the bulldog on it. Tried to take my minner, I still see it. If I can get a hold of it, there it is. <laughs> oh man, that dude just bulldogged that. Oh, what a lot of fun, folks. Oh, 
have to watch is when I throw that direction, if I don't get hooked up, I wind up finding that stick up out there, that tree. See if I can get it through there without losing it. But the trees are where the fish congregate. There's a fine one. There he is. <laughs> oh my. What a lot of fun, folks. This is a pan fish day right now. Using these Northland gumball jigs, one sixty fourth of an ounce, teamed up with a one inch gulp live minnow and got it hooked wacky style and these fish are burning them up right now. If you like pan fish action, this is your video today. There he is. Another bluegill right there. There you go. Thanks for playing. Slung both my minners off. <laughs> but I got my jig heads back. I'm going to put one more set of baits on and this will probably be it for the day. The fish are still biting, but I've got work tomorrow for another two and a half years if the Lord tarries. And then I'll be able to do this a little more often. If the Lord tarries and allows me to live to retirement and uh, this world is any shape to live in by then, me and the redhead plan on doing a whole lot more fishing and camping and a little bit of traveling if the Lord permits. That is the plan. We'll see if it works out. There's a fish. <laughs> what a blast. If I ain't mistaken, that dude just spit out a gulp minnow. Ain't that something? I see it laying there on the on the uh, dock here. Caught one. Well that thing's baby. It's a baby blue goo. Look at it. Let's take a picture. Okay. Let's go. Get the dang off, Don Mackey. We're getting a whole bunch now, guys. Hey, 
look at it. Hey, bugger. Let's throw him in. Oh, cut. He did a backflip. Bye. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? I got another one. That thing big. Let's take it. We go. We go. We're going on a trip. And our favorite rocket trip. Going through the sky. Low on sun. Okay, we will see you when we're over there. Bye. There he is. Ooh wee. He hit it strong. Not a big fish, but a, just a feisty one. Feisty little red ear there. Yeah, we got a fish. Wasn't sure whether I was in the... Oh, a little bass there. Yeah. Uh-oh, he got in the water on me and throw both of my jig bodies off the hook. Well, folks, as far as my part of the video, I am going to hang it up for today. But what a great time it's been down here on the pond. I'm gonna let Jace, Jace just throwed one back in that he just caught. Gonna let him catch just a couple more fish and then we're gonna get out of here and uh, make our way back to Kentucky. It's been a great day, folks. And hope you've enjoyed riding along with us on this prefrontal bite here on the uh, pond out here in Southern Illinois. Uh, we will talk to you later. God bless you, folks. Okay, guys. Okay. Okay, guys, we caught one more. Well, we caught another one. We get to catch one more. So, let's get the hook out of it. Let's get our tool. If it will open his mouth, I could get it. Have a little more time. Okay. Oh, cut. Okay. I still need shot too. Bye bye. Okay. Last fish to catch. Okay. Oh, got one. Got one, guys. Hey, after we get this thing in, time to go. Take this off because it took my lure. Okay, now we just gotta pick this thing up when it stops. Okay, let's get it. Okay. Bye guys, see y'all next time when I do a video with Papa Bear. Bye. Well folks, we have had a fantastic time down here on this Sunday afternoon, down here at the pond enjoying this prefrontal bite. Me and Jace Man has laid into the fish today and we have had quite the time. 
Most of the fish were smaller, but that's okay. It was fun to tug the line. So this is Papa Bear and the Jace Man with Papa Bear Outdoors. God bless you folks. Remember to su subscribe to our channel, like the videos you like, share them with your friends and family. Hit the bell to receive video, new video notifications. And until next time, Jace Man and me are saying God bless you folks from Papa Bear Outdoors. We love you folks. Bye.